Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, something that I love to do when the project is done, I do my own finishes. So I've been mainly using for the past year because before I used this, I used a different brand and it was a different uh, chemical altogether. This is a professional waterborne polyurethane. Uh, this is by General Finishes, Enduro Poly. I've been uh, spraying it for about the last year. It's ready to be sprayed right out of the can. There's no thinning. I've sprayed it over a hundred times and every time it's been consistent, I've never thinned it out. So uh, basically what you wanna do is if it's an old can, you want to strain it through a paper strainer into the cup of the gun, whatever gun you're using. In this case, I'm using HVLP, high volume, low pressure system, and it's a canister driven from the bottom of the gun, has a suction tube, and the air forces through the system, pulls it up to a suction tube and sprays it out and atomizes it very well. Now, what I'm going to do is first stir it up. And before I spray, obviously, you gotta get a chemical resistant and fume resistant rated uh, mask to wear because that you don't wanna breathe that stuff in. Even though it's waterborne, it still has resins and, and things inside the polyurethane and chemicals you don't wanna breathe into your lungs. Okay, so we're gonna stir it up really good. Don't stir it too hard because you don't wanna make air bubbles in the system. Create air, you're gonna have another problem on your hands. So that's gonna bubble up, you have to sand it out, and it's just a little more tedious. Okay, so. See the consistency you want it dripping straight off of the, the stirring stick, in this case, a scrap piece of plywood. And once you're done stirring it up, you can go ahead and pour it through the paper strainer into the can. Okay, now using that paper strainer and putting it in the canister of the gun, it takes a very long time, so I did it off camera to save time. Okay, so now you can see I have the material in the cup. I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna lock it in. All right, let's just get a little stir inside the can, get it moving. And this stuff dries really quick, so go ahead and you know, put the lid back on your can when you're done using it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our mask and hearing protection because that machine, it is always pumping volume of air through the system. It's not like a compressor, it just constantly gives you airflow. So what we're gonna do is wear hearing protection and we're gonna wear chemical fume rated mask. Now really quick, these are two boards that are going to be sprayed later, but I just want to give you an idea of how you need to move your hands in order to spray this correctly without getting an uneven finish or drips and runs and things like that. What you don't want to do is when you tip the gun, you're going to tip it almost at a 45 degree angle or, or less. And as you spray, you've got to keep your wrist straight and spray straight across the whole piece then you start the spray pattern off the piece, come back and I'll demonstrate this as we spray the piece. Come off, let go of the trigger, then off the workpiece, spray again, and move it into the workpiece and across. Now you'll notice as I go across each time, I'm maintaining that flat plane to the surface. I'm not twisting my wrist at all. You'll see some people there, they'll spray like this, and what they're doing is they're getting the coverage that they think they need, but they're not getting an even coverage. So what's going on is as you swing your wrist like this, you're giving yourself much more of a film right here in the spot where you got close, then you're pulling the gun away and you're getting less coverage over here. So now you have an uneven finish. So every time you sand it down and get ready to put on the next coat, you're gonna see that that spot that you keep doing this in, you're gonna get a more of a build up here and then you're gonna have these uneven high spots and low spots when you do the final sanding and it's not gonna look good. So just maintain that wrist straight across. So what I like to do first is just, you know, if you're new at this, just practice. Practice doing that, going back and forth, keeping the gun anywhere, depending on the tip size that you're using, between six and 12 inches away from the workpiece. I like to keep it around eight to 10, so that's right in the middle, and just go across. And then you're gonna overlap. You want an overlapping pattern, so I'm gonna spray. And as I spray, I'm gonna get this fan pattern here. Then I'm gonna pull off, I'm gonna start to spray again. I'm gonna come back and about maybe a quarter of an inch or less overlap. So the first pattern was here. My second pattern is gonna be right here. It's gonna overlap a little bit and that's gonna dissolve any lines, any separations in the film. They'll blend right into each other. All right, so let's get out there and I'll show you the technique and I won't speed up the footage. I'll just go straight through spraying so you can see. All right, so really quick, before we begin to spray here, if you keep the spray tip 
sideways, horizontal like this, that will give you the fan pattern to go sideways across. If you turn the nozzle in the vertical position, that will give you a vertical spray pattern and you'd be able to turn the gun and go this way if you wanted to. Now, if you were spraying on a vertical surface, that's okay. Like when I did the barn doors, I had them standing up and I switched to a vertical position. But in this instance here, we're gonna go horizontal. So I'm gonna keep the tip horizontal. And since it's a smaller board, I'm going to adjust the nozzle opening of the tip and have it as a smaller fan pattern. And I'm also not gonna, I'm gonna back off the material a little bit. I don't need as much coming out at once. All right, so let's get the safety equipment on and turn it on and spray. First thing you want to do before spraying your finish is make sure that there's no dust on the surface. So I'm just using an air hose here from the unit and blowing off any residual dust. Now before I start spraying, I'm off the workpiece on a piece of scrap and I'm getting my spray pattern. And now when I'm happy with the spray pattern, I'm going to take nice light passes. The first coat is basically a dusting, so don't go too heavy on the first coat. You'll notice I'm maintaining the plane of the wrist. I'm not flicking the wrist at all and I'm just going straight back and forth in a nice slow steady pace don't go too slow because you can create too much of a buildup and you'll have some drips and runs and you don't want the finish to sag Okay, so I'm done spraying the first coat, right? So I need to do two additional coats. Now you're saying to yourself, I've heard that a water-based poly, you have to get it out of the gun right away or it's gonna jam up the system, clog it up, you'll, and then you'll ruin the system. That's the furthest thing from the truth. I'll tell you right now, I've done this over a hundred times. All you do, clean the tip. You can just clean it with a little water and a brush, put a piece of painter's tape over it. It's a closed system. As long as you don't disconnect anything or take the cup off, the canister of the gun, the tip, anything like that, leave it alone, set it down on your workbench or wherever it has a little hook. You can hang it up on a screw somewhere if you want. I'm just gonna set it down on the workbench and I'll leave it alone. This is going to dry in about 45 minutes to an hour the most, depending on how heavy a coat you put. Now, I did a light coat for the first coat. It's almost like a dusting. The second coat is just a little bit heavier. And then the third coat is gonna be the final heavy wet mill coat. That's your glass finish protection right there. So what we're gonna do is let this dry. Once this dries, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna hit it with 400 grit sandpaper. So between every coat, I use 400 grit sandpaper. I don't use 220. People say use 220. I think it leaves too much uh, scratches in the finish that you can see when the next coat goes over it. So what I do is I use a 400 grit, which is finer, and I'm able to wipe off any little powder that comes off of sanding it from that and gets rid of any little bubbles and things like that, and it, I don't have those deep scratches. So that's what my system. And then I'll spray my second coat, come back when it dries, we'll do another coat of the, uh, another sanding of the 400. Then the third and final coat, I'll use a brown paper bag or 2000 grit sandpaper, and then we'll be done. All right, so let's let this sit for a little bit. I'll come back when it's dry, we'll sand it down, we'll do the second coat. Leave it in the gun. In roughly 45 minutes and the piece is completely dry and it does have a slightly bit of a rough texture and that's because it was a light dusting coat for the first coat. Now you can see where the overspray went here on the bench. That is still wet because I sprayed multiple pieces. So that just goes to show you how long it takes to dry, you know, if you do a heavy wet mill coat. So being that that first coat on the piece was actually very light, it's completely dry. So now I'm gonna take my 400 grit sandpaper and just lightly, lightly hand sand it. Take it off any little high spots or any pieces that might have been, you know, like a bubble or anything like that. Just break those real quick. And this is just light pressure. I'm not pressing hard at all. This is just to knock down any of the finish. That's it, we wipe it off. And now we're gonna spray it. Here really quick, after we sanded it down, before we spray the next coat, I like to take a tack cloth, which is a, a cloth that has a, a sticky film on it. And what that'll do is lift any of the dust off the piece so it won't get trapped underneath the finish. You wipe that off and it takes off all that powder dust that it creates when you sand the finish. 
and that's ready to spray. Now the second coat's dry, so we're going to do a light sanding and spray a third final coat. Okay guys, so it's been about an hour for the last coat to dry and it is smooth as glass. So what I like to do at this point after the third coat has cured out for at least an hour or more is I take either a 2000 grit sandpaper or if you don't have 2000 grit sandpaper, you can just take a paper bag and it will do the same thing. If you feel the paper bag, it feels just like 2000 grit sandpaper. Just take the sandpaper, roll the bag, and just with just the weight of your hand, lightly just brush over it. And it won't take the sheen off it at all. It will just knock off any little high spot that you may have and give it a glass-like feel. You could even do both if you want. You could even use the paper bag to kind of polish it afterwards. And that's it. Wipe off any little residual dust that you might have caused with the 2000 grit or the bag. And then, oh, if you can see this, look at the sheen on that. That's three coats of the water-based satin, and we're all done. And that's it. After that, clean the stuff out of the gun, get it out of there. What I like to do first, uh, fill it up with water and then run it through the unit and let it spray the water out. That'll force any of the polyurethane that you emptied out that stays in the gun, that'll force it out of the gun. And then I take it to uh, a slop sink and clean everything out. All right, everybody, so I hope you guys liked the video. I uh, hope you got something out of it. If you were deciding to uh, start to spray your finishes, uh, you can use water base or you can use oil base. The only thing is with the oil base, it takes a lot longer to dry and the odors are a lot more harmful and you definitely need good ventilation for that. The waterborne, they dry in about half an hour to an hour, depending on the temperature, if you have it right. Uh, and that's about 65, 70 degrees in your shop or outside, depending if you're gonna spray it outside. And then you just sand it down and three coats and you can get three coats of the water-based poly done in about four to five hours all right so that's it guys make sure you hit that subscribe button definitely hit that little notification bell there you'll be notified every time i upload a video once again guys thanks for joining me in my shop i hope you guys learned something today and make sure you stay tuned we got a lot of projects coming up all right see you next time